free as Pokemon, this would be kind of cool, actually. Because uh, I feel like the, you could you could have... An, uh, I feel like it would be so cool that... Because they, I think in the fusion they have like a, um, a t like a Ursa Ring um, fusion that has like a fun as a free style. All right, let's have a look. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Sternator, but my friends call me Stern, and we have much to celebrate today because mm -hmm. not only have we reached a personal milestone of hitting 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh, 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 oh. But we also have a birthday to celebrate. That's right, you've seen the thumbnail, so you know that today we are not just celebrating 2K subscribers, but also 10 years of Five Nights at Freddy's. Let's go. And to celebrate, I have something very special for you. August 8th, 2014, the first in what will become a long series of games, books, comics, and merchandise mm -hmm. launched with Scott Cawthon's Five Nights at Freddy's. And with the Steel Wool Studios stepping in, this mm -hmm. haunted carnival train ain't looking to lose any steam. Next year, we're expecting a new Five Nights at Freddy's game set to give us further information on Security Breach and the dreaded Mimic, as yep. well as a continuation of the last movie starring childhood heartthrob Jesus Matthew Christ. Lillard. And if that isn't enough, 2025 will also bring us the Dead by Daylight FNAF tie-in and crossover. I can't wait for that collab, I'm not gonna lie. If the killer's not Springtrap, I'll be very disappointed. Yeah. Well, there's only two thing, two people it can be. It has to be either Springtrap or it has to be um, Fanny. It has or to be... Freddy. Or Foxy. Or Bunny. Or Chica. Well, no. If they're going to do the, the gang, they'll probably do the... Or the Mimic. Um, actually, the, actually, the Mimic is actually a good, good shout, too. But I would say... If I would... If they're going to do those... The, those four, I would say... Make them Legion skins. Make 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 the make the make Chica Bonnie ch make Chica Bonnie Foxy and um Chica um um Legion skins like they did with the um rap those rabbit skins. To be honest. So today we are throwing our hat into the ring and drawing out what a few of the most iconic FNAF characters would look like as Pokemon. Plus, an added little surprise thrown in there too. Oh, so, stay guy? tuned. I think the best place to purple start guy? with these designs is the beginning. The puppet made its first appearance in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. And I know that that Ooh, undermines everything that I just said about starting at the beginning, but stick with me here. Okay. Lore-wise, the puppet was the protector and guardian of the lost spirits of the children. It can be found near the prize corner hidden away in a music box. And this thing was the bane of every FNAF 2 player's existence, with us having to constantly wind up the music box, Ooh. check that camera while we're fighting for our lives against other okay. animatronics. Oh, it was a nightmare. Sick, it supposedly oh, houses the soul of Charlotte Emily, the first of William Afton's victims and daughter to his business partner Henry Emily. There is a lot. Actually, that's not true. Technically, um, technically, taking technically, the puppet, the, the, the puppet died died last. Is actually being confirmed. The puppet died last. That can be said about this gangly monstrosity. But let's mm. dig into the design a little bit. So the design that I wanted to go for was taking into account the music box. Mm. I know that there's some lore beyond that, but when we were first introduced to this character, the music box was a large component of its design. That and I wanted to that keep that. I wanted to make it feel like this was not drawn out of the entirety of the lore, but drawn out of the lore of FNAF 2. So, it's in a music box, which I made a little bit more monstrous, kind of giving it that gimmick ghoul so, type of treatment, where like it's hidden away in this treasure chest, but the treasure chest is a music box. One of the hardest things I had to work with was the design for the face. I knew that I wanted to include the cheeks because the head isn't perfectly round, and I wanted to include the uh, some of the aspects of cool. it. Being it's a, I didn't want to take away. Mm. The it's, it's already a cool design. It's already a cool design. I also wanted to keep its gangly limbs, its long and serpentine appendages, but I wanted to give them some purpose outside of just being a puppet. So I had them kind of coming out of this box, holding many spirits. Coming out, coming out. That was the thought out. that I went with, was how mm. do I capture the idea of the, the puppet and what it's supposed to be in the lore, while also making it a Pokemon? That's kind of the whole thing here. So I had it be inside this box, I had to have these wisps of smoke and energy. I made the inside of the box purple to kind of mimic the type of colors that we see in other ghost-type Pokemon, because of course this does have to be a ghost-type Pokemon. 
I wanted to segment up the head a little bit, and while I know that the puppet doesn't actually wear a bow tie, instead has several buttons, I thought that it would work here, again, to segment and break up the shape of the head from the arms. So I added a little bow tie. I also think that it's going to give me some opportunity to draw the color of the red from the face. Wish I could draw a lot. That, that's a, that. Next game is box, and the box the has a it color is. to it. Uh, it changes depending on which type of franchise you're looking at or which portion of the franchise you're looking at. But I went with the original box, which was purple. That's and really, really, it's also that's really good design. Yellow sometimes, or even red. You would think it was an actual Pokemon. I wanted to keep it blue and purple because I think that that makes it feel like this puppet doesn't belong there. It feels like the colors don't quite mix well. So we have red, yellow, white, black, all coming out of the puppet. But the box itself looks like your average kid's present. And I thought that was pretty interesting. So I took that into account here. That's good. Wow, that's really, and so that's here fucking we have awesome. Mimet. The name Mimet comes from a couple different uh, interpretations There's here. I wanted to get Puppet, fairy, I wanted so to get Mime, like... and I wanted to get Mimic, as well as possibly Marionette. There were a lot of different ideas oh, kind of thrown around version. as to what that's I cool. wanted to do and where I wanted to go with this. I made the shiny a box that much more mimics some of the other artwork that I've seen. Uh, okay, swapping out cool. some of the orange for a little bit darker red, more dingy, almost like a cardboard box. If you've seen the actual end to FNAF 2, that's, you know, that's, that's actually really cool, actually. Lines, a lost child sleeping in a cardboard box. It's not too tall. I wanted it to feel more human esque in actually, shape, so I used the head as a reference for that. Of course, it is ghost type, but I also wanted to give it the fairy typing as a protector of spirits. It is the puppet Pokemon, and I wanted to give it some stats that reflect that okay. it's not mm, too crazy go. powerful. Can definitely hold its own, but it itself has other things going on. I don't know if I wanted to give it an ability that does something with the lore of the puppet, moving souls and things. I'll leave that to you guys in the comments, so let me know. But for the moment, this is Mimet. Okay, very cool. Gonna be honest here, the next character that I wanted to draw, of course, <laughs> and I didn't quite know okay. where to take that. Okay. He has so many different forms, so many different shapes that we see throughout the series, and so many different reasons for his existence. That <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. That's that's cool. Hold on, don't run yet, don't leave, please. I know that that's not everyone's favorite game, but it does introduce us to a smaller version. Oh, a little small boy. Small boy. As a pre-evolution to the, the main attraction, if you will. Oh, he's doing so pre -evolution. I want to use this version that you find kind of sitting on the beds, chattering away. Very oh, he's doing the, um, he's doing, he's doing a friddle from Tremere 4. As a reference point. I also brought in the oh, idea that's of a cool. trap. I thought, okay, if we're going to go with Freddy, and of course we have to reference. The bite of 87? The bite of 87? The trap made that work really, really well. The, so we're going to see that throughout the design um, motifs of Freddy this Bear. version and its evolution. We're going to see kind of those teeth. That was kind of really what I stuck on was, okay, this thing is known for biting. There's a lot of controversy throughout the fandom over who actually did the bite of 87. I don't know if it's ever been truly acknowledged. It's but for a long while, we believed that it was Freddy. And given the accounts no, of the little Freddies, who have a name I can't remember, Freddy Fazbear himself, Nightmare Freddy, Golden Freddy, all that, the idea of destruction and pain really lingers throughout. So I made it a bear trap, and I think that it works really well. I also gave it these really off-putting eyes. Uh, if you know me and you've seen some of my other videos, you know how much that I disagree with the decision of goats to have sideways eyes. Okay. And so I gave that to this, because it gives it a little bit more of an off-putting energy. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want this thing to feel in any way like it was cute and cuddly and, oh, how wonderful, how fun to have this guy on my team. I wanted it to feel like this thing was a terror. If you think of James from the Pokemon anime and his victory bell, that's the energy that I'm looking for here. Okay. So I, I played with that a lot. I'm not gonna lie, the design looks really cool. So I actually think that this is a design. character that comes from kind of the nightmare dimension of Five Nights at Freddy's 4. I wanted to have it have a little bit different lighting than we're used to. So instead of being backlit, this is looking into the shadows. So I, I, it, it's going to have the light kind of hitting a little bit differently. That's and I like that about it. I like that it kind of feels like it hides in the shadows. That's the whole interpretation of it in game is you kind of turn around and it's there. And That's again, really just like the puppet cool, before, actually. it was another one of those things that just gave me so much panic playing the game to think I don't want to turn around but I also know that I have to, and God, how do Freddy, I... Freddy Fazbear is a freaking starter. 
That'd be fucking cool. How do I put that in this design? So I went ahead and added that to the system here. It's gonna be a ghost steel type, which I think just perfectly hits the vibe of these ghost steel type types of Pokemon and the mismatch of pretty oh, fast. The shiny, the shiny so looks here's Maz Cub. Loving that name. I wanted to give it shiny. Personally, I think that they should have made it golden Freddy colors. But the thing is, I can see why with the black for like like um um nightmare nightmare nightmare. Okay, that's kind of cool. Color that kind of mimicked another version of Freddy that we see, which is Lefty. So it has that black and yellow type of color. Yeah, lefty, lefty's, no, lef, lefty's not Freddy though. I can see where you were going with it, but I think it's um, Lefty's not technically Freddy. To it, it's a little guy. If you look at the size chart, right. there it is. Ghost Steel. As I said before, the Bear Trap Pokemon. Mm. It's well known throughout the lore that the I kids love the are inside I love the, name the animatronics. Huge reveal in the movie. Huge reveal in the game. I love the name Fast so Cub. I wanted to capture that. What <laughs> yeah. I love that. I actually, I actually love itself, that name. Which is why it also has that bear trap style stomach. I love Faz Cub so mm. much. Probably one of my favorite designs from this Pretty episode. Pretty Faz Cub. Uh, I love them all, but this is definitely one that mixes that cute and angry factor. I, I really, actually love. Really I actually love. Well. I actually love. Like I actually any love, of the this, other bear love types this that design. we have in Pokemon. But as much as I love my funny little bear guy, he must evolve and he must get bigger. And we Ooh. must take into account the pieces and parts of Freddy lore, okay. as well as what we feel about it. That's what I think with these okay, designs. Freddy's it's evolving. not so much translating directly one to one what you see, oh, he's doing but it. He's giving it the <clears throat> vibe of what it was oh, meant he's, to be he's doing and what it's bear. putting out there. So I want to expand on the bear trap idea, and I think that utilizing Nightmare Freddy as a reference point to that, as well as bringing in some aspects of Lamrock Freddy, really allowed that to happen. So being that Freddy is oh. the lead singer of the Freddy Fazbear band, I wanted to give him that microphone, which is where that glam rock inspiration comes from. But I also wanted to, like I said, infuse that Nightmare Freddy. So we see the bear trap brought in in the previous version okay. kind of expand and evolve itself here. So it becomes this large screaming maw in the middle of the chest of Freddy. Its entire body taken up by this. And I think utilizing Nightmare Freddy and Glamrock as the inspirations for that really take it to a certain level that I really enjoy. I made the head a lot smaller because I wanted the focus point to be that central stomach, which is very easy because it's absolutely massive. So like I said, not taking the exact proportions and things of Freddy, but getting that vibe and bringing in a lot of the elements that we see throughout the various interpretations. This is so then I came like, the coloring. I didn't know what I wanted to do with the color. I thought for a I little bit about maybe more the glam rock style, but I did still want to stick to the pre-evolution having some relevance. So I went with the classic Freddy colors. And when I did that, I was made aware that, oh man, I'm, I'm bringing a lot of elements from the different iterations of the character. And that was, that was really, really cool. To, to be able to mix everything together in that way yeah, and allowed me to make something that I was proud of. Actually kind of sick. And integrating more of that really steel design, design not lot. just as bear traps, but as actual body segmentation really helped with being able to break up the shapes that, that we're seeing within this design. I, I love his little microphone so much, and I picture this Pokemon having a lot of sound-based attacks, maybe electric as well, but mainly he's gonna have design. all of the bite types. All of the bite type attacks for this guy. Um, how could you not? He's just one big maw. <laughs> it also gives me some of that mimic energy that we saw in the puppet. I mean, is that not the purpose of the entire series? That's so They're all that's mimics so cool. of some kind. Drawing in. I would love to be around just to eat them, absorb them. Pull them into themselves, absorb their souls, whatever it may be. I, I think that utilizing a mimic motif really anchored in what I was going so cool. for with these designs. And so here oh. we are. Oh. Look, at the, look at the Golden Free design. Fares bites. Okay, that's funny. I actually like, love I like the Golden Freddy one. Yeah, the Golden Freddy looks, looks sick. But Fares bite. Have Fazbite, the bear trap Pokemon. Again, Ghost Steel, and what is that shiny over there? Is that something that appears a little bit more golden than before? Yeah, I thought about making Golden Freddy its own Pokemon design that may come sometime in the future, but for the moment, I like, I like, it is the I like, shiny to this as Golden Freddy was like a rare it. occurrence like in the initial game, and so he is a rare occurrence <laughs> here. He's really much like, bigger like than his previous counterpart, kind of toppling over the human. I wanted to make sure that the size made it so that a human could almost kind of fit in that chest type maw 
um, not very comfortably, but still good. I gave it a little bit more power here, nothing too insane, but it is okay. kind of that, uh, that, that beefy monstrosity. And again, if you have any ideas for abilities for these guys, I would love to hear them. I purposely left those out because there is so much that you can do that I thought I'd leave it up to you guys. Let me know in the comments what ability you think these guys should have or how they should be intertwined. I, I would love to hear it. But as much as we love Fred, as of now, there's a new big bad in town. One that always comes back. No matter how much oh, we no defeat him, no matter how often that we burn him alive, he always seems to come back. And I really got myself pumped to draw this through so many different iterations on what I wanted to do, how I wanted to handle this concept, but I think what we ended up with really captures a few different aspects of the character, takes them into account, and I'm pumped about it. Uh, this, of course, is our spring trap design. How do you turn a man in a costume into a Pokemon? I don't know. I, I, I played around with it quite a bit and eventually landed on something that I think kind of works. Uh, as you can see, I'm going in just kind of making the suit. And as much as I tried to make that work, as much as I argued with myself, I eventually realized if I want to make this work as a Pokemon design, I can't feel like a man in a suit. At least, at least not fully. So I got rid of the actual bunny ears and gave it these wisps. I also have the arms kind of wisping away as well, as if this thing were made of multiple spirits all trying to get away. Or if it was a person in there point that now is something else trapped and i think that that really works not as trapped uh spring trapped if you will so i think it still captures that bunny energy as much as spring trap ever actually did while also giving off the vibe that this thing is decayed and breaking i gave it just the one eye which i thought is kind of dust skulls thing but I, I like the idea that floating around that this thing is not itself but is a spirit or a soul or something trapped inside that just right. can't leave. As much as this body decays, it is just a shell of what is truly hidden inside. And so uh, I think that we captured that well by incorporating in not just those wisps, but also the decaying like body there. I gave it these, uh, cyl not cylindrical, spherical shoulder guards to, again, reinforce the idea that there is mechanic to this. And it also allowed me to break up a couple of If you follow me on Instagram, you may know that I've actually Should done a spring trap design before. But I'm going to be honest, I am much, much, much happier with this. I'm really happy that I went away from the, the, the concept that I was just drawing a mechanical suit for the concept of, okay, this has to be very clearly a rabbit, and instead went with something that allows all of those ideas to combine and yet also be their own. It is a spirit. It is vaguely a rabbit. It is uh, vaguely mechanical. And, ah, uh, man, I, I really like the idea of it. How do you make yellowish, grayish appear spirit e? That was kind of my big question for this design. Because I think of purples, I think of blues, I think of greens, I think of white, I think of all these other colors that could work very well for a ghost or a spirit. And none of them are. I actually do like yellow. the design. So that was fun, okay, this, I, I guess. Okay, this looks it was definitely a learning opportunity and experience to mess around with some more non-traditional designs and color elements. And so here we have Spring Grab. I want. I love it. Oh my god, the, 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 the shiny purple. Okay, I fucked with it. The, 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 shiny, the, the shiny purple. Okay, I actually do fuck with that. I give it this energy that it was spiritual or ghostly but it was chasing after you it was a pokemon that captures other pokemon and people i wanted to keep that element to spring traps to okay. it is the costume pokemon ghost and steel and if you look at the shiny you can see that i wanted to bring in some of that mixies energy from uh security breach weirdly enough it's something probably mentioned in its pokedex entry is how it moves just like a man and is about the size of your average adult and maybe there's other things in there too. Maybe it stinks. Maybe it smells. I don't know. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. This really worked out as a, uh, an experiment in what we as a community could do. 
Crib makes we all have sales. so much lore understanding of Pokemon, and a lot of us have lore understanding of Map. So take that into account. Let me know. What do you think? What do you see in this design that you think? Oh, this would definitely be cool. If you added this or that. I think it it, it would it would result be better if he took the if he changed the uh, with 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 the black bits and made it made it purple. Made all these made all these light things purple. But that's just me. Had this ability, or I things like purple, that. I think the purple, the purple, makes so much more sense to me. As well. But the thing about Pokemon is, if they're this powerful, and if they're all of the same type, all being ghost type, most being steel, they should have a gym trainer, shouldn't they? Mm -hmm. And as much as I thought about who they would best fit with, I realized mm -hmm. we have to make our own. Something that we haven't really done a ton of on the channel, but we have to. These all have to be controlled by one. Oh my god, is he making William Afton? All of these animatronics under the command of one person. And who better than William Afton himself? So here we are drawing Pokemon trainer, gym leader, William Afton, the ghost type gym leader. I wanted to give him a face that was semi reminiscent of what we see in the comics, but captured more of the energy of the movies. I'll be honest, when I see him in the comics and it's oh, he has this broad grin on the top. I wanted it to feel a little bit more nuanced, so I gave him this almost I'm better than you type of expression. I wanted him to feel lean, and I wanted him to feel kind of overworked and willowy. So I took all those things into account. I gave him these sharp angles, these hollowed out cheeks, and these dark, very <coughs> depressing eyes. The art design is insane. Say about the art design is insane. Really cool design that I had some inspiration for. I mean, I heard his voice in the games, we watched the man burn alive and others, and somehow he always comes back. I'm curious always how he would comes. function in a game, how he would work. Probably a character that you could battle multiple times, and every single time they come back with something stronger. Something that we haven't seen yet. Maybe you battle him this time, and he has a Faz Bite, and he has a Spring Grab, but next time maybe he has something based on Chica has something different every single time and no matter how many times that you seem to defeat him he always comes back. always comes I think that, that is always comes beyond interesting of a concept for you. and I'm really glad that I was able to actually draw out the William Afton as a gym leader of course he'd be the gym leader to the ghost type having like the Pokemon that we've seen today maybe some more like I said I'd love to see him as a character that takes in that always come back type of energy and mm -hmm. always has something new. He is an inventor after all, and if these are steel ghost types, we have to say that he's not hiding out, making more. So, before that Pokemon can be derived from lost human spirits, I, I think of Pokemon like Trevenant, who just drew on a live the other day, and how that is uh, supposedly a human spirit trapped. I wonder. I wonder how he's getting all of these powerful mm -hmm. And how he always seems to have another and always seems to come back. Okay, that's and so that's that's Afton, and of course his arm mostly Pokemon. He has so much mystery tied around him that I'm curious how you can or if you can solve exactly what's going on with him. Is this a gym leader that you would like to see in the Gustavus region? Or is this something that should exist only in our nightmares? Let me know. And again, congratulations to FNAF for making it 10 years. That's when I was first playing these games, the year that they came out, I never would have guessed cool. that they would expand as they did thanks to YouTube creators like Markiplier and MatPat and all these other people who kind of expanded the lore. Thank you so much for making this something that could live on forever. Like an unendable spirit ghost thing trapped in an animatronic machine. Thank you, I guess, for that. But for those of you who are watching and those of you who enjoyed this video, thank you for being here as well. Again, we're celebrating 2,000 subscribers, and I'm glad that we're able to do this today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can also find me on all of my different socials, all linked down below. You can support us across a couple different variations of those as well. And until next time, it sounds like you know where to find me. Catch you in the next one. Actually, the, the, 
the art des the honestly, art design is insane. Art design was absolutely insane. GG's my friend, GG's. Don't come to my house or else I'll suck your dick, uh, blood. I'll suck your blood. <laughs> oh, shit.